here today to talk about Quinton acquiring his first $36 million asset. Today on the show, we have Quinton D'Souza. He's a real estate entrepreneur with some vertically integrated businesses, and he's about to share the story of when he acquired his first $36 million asset. Awesome. Well, thanks for having me, Chad. I really appreciate it. Well, this was three years ago. It was eight apartment buildings together and had never closed on anything of that size before. So I was pretty nervous about, about doing it. And I was concerned that I wasn't going to be able to raise the funds to be able to do it and then carry out the business plan to, to, to bring it to success. Well, we, we, so it was myself and two other partners that formed a partnership. We raised some of the, the, the funds. I think we were, we had to raise 10 million in order to get the buildings purchased, reached out to our network, got everything done in like 60 days, which was all the time we had to raise the funds. And uh, I think the, the largest th like thing that I had raised before was for like a million dollars. So like adding another zero onto that was pretty, pretty scary, nerve wracking. And just going through the process and doing it, I it just, I, I learned that I should have been doing that sooner. <laughs> it was something that I, I could do and I just, I just hadn't done before. So it, it, I think if you push yourself outside your comfort zone and you, you, you try something a little bit more than what you thought you could, you can actually achieve a lot more than you thought you could achieve. And that's what it was really. It was just pushing myself to be able to, to do that. That's a you pretty know, short time frame, 60 days to raise that amount of money. That's typical with the, in the real estate space. So, you know, I, I personally have about 130 million in assets and that's something that Every time you buy a new building or you do a new project, you, you need to have the network of accredited investors around you that are able to have the funds to, to be able to participate. So it becomes a bit of a race every time you do it to, to make sure that you have the funds. Cause you're, what you're doing is you're going through the due diligence period when it comes to purchasing the apartment building. And then, then it's all about getting the, the, the funds in, in place, getting the due diligence completed, kind of everything comes together and then close on the property. And then you start carrying out the business plan. So there's, there's a lot of kind of moving pieces to that. So it's, I mean, it's, it's really an interesting process, but we, all of those buildings, since we purchased them have done very well. So quite happy with what, what's been happening on those assets. And, but it was, it was really scary at the time. Since then, just continuing to acquire more assets and, and, and grow. So it's, it's, it was kind of a, a great stepping stone out of what, what I had done before. And I mean, there are lots of times when I thought that I, I, I wasn't going to like I, that I hadn't done it before, but I just pushed myself to be able to get those things done. So it was, it was a good learning experience. Uh, my business is very vertically integrated. I have a number of different pieces to it and those all help to, to scaffold the success of the, the business. I mean, we're, we're collecting, I think we're at about 900,000 in rents per month. So like, it's, it's quite a bit of back and forth. We also have the property management and we have renovations. So there's, there's a lot going on. And then I also, I run a real estate investment club called the Durham REI. And so we have like 300 members that, that pay a, a, a monthly or an annual fee that are, they're part of, of that. And so we're doing a, like a meeting a month and then some support. And then we have lots of online courses that are available to all the members that they, it's all part of their membership. So they learn about real estate investing and how to do it themselves. So there's a lot of different pieces. I've written six books on real estate investing. And so I've got a lot of different things that kind of help, help me to help my business and, and bring awareness to that, but also just scaffold some of the the, the different projects that I've been working on. Are the books a big driver for you? I think the books were more of a legacy piece for 
my kids. So my, my kids are, well, now they're 15 and 18, but they, uh, I hope that one day they're interested in real estate and I don't want to push them in a particular direction, but I can see my older ones re really interested in it. And I wanted to make sure that I had some materials for them that if something were to happen to me, they could kind of hear my voice and kind of want to follow my footsteps, then there's kind of a roadmap for that. So that's why I wrote those, those books for my, for my boys to, to help them along the way, if they choose to, to go down that path, but anybody else could benefit from them too. So I think they're good for, for that legacy piece from, I guess, from a, for people knowing who I am and what I do, that it's been helpful to have those books. I would say that if you're going to do anything, maybe one book, don't do six books. <laughs> but I mean, like, it, I mean, it, it, some people say that it's a great business card. I, I've, I found that for me, it's been, it's been helpful for bringing awareness. And if your book does well, and my, my book has done really well in Ontario, Canada, where I focus, it that's brought me quite a few people into the real estate investing club that also are interested in in learning and then help my overall business as well what got you started in real estate initially so i was i was a teacher actually in in the public school system for probably i would say like 10 years and i got my masters of education my principal qualification i was going down that path and then I started to experiment with different types of investing and different projects and different like consulting and things like that. And then in 2004, I, I started with one project in real estate. In 2008, I started to pick up four or five properties a year. 2013, I left that job and I started to focus on real estate full time. I flipped like a dozen houses my first year then i i figured out that that was more work than actually teaching was so i was like this isn't the <laughs> this is not the actual thing like i i was i was i just had given myself a job which wasn't what i wanted and so then i focused on apartment buildings which actually was more of a business so each apartment building is like a little business with profits and losses and in some cases, you may have an on-site super, you may have property management, but you have different, different people in your business that are employees, assistants, bookkeepers, all of that sort of stuff. And it became more of a business for me at that time. I started to really get into scale, which, which helped. And I found that it was the best returns from all the other stuff that I had experimented with other than... Like other than owning a business, real estate is, <laughs> for me, is the the most profitable. I think number one is always being a business owner. I think that if you if you do if you run your business well, and you you're able to scale it well, your your returns are are much higher. But real estate is a, what I found is that a lot of times that I run into business owners who when they want to sell their business often get into real estate afterwards, which is kind of interesting because when I, when I go to entrepreneur events, I'm, I'm the opposite of everybody in the room. So it's, it's kind of funny, but, but people are always, always interested and they, they like to talk to me about, about that. But uh, yeah, it's, a, it, it's, a, it's a great business and it's because of, I, I failed on so many other types of investments, trying different things that I found that real estate worked the best for me. And I was able to, I had so much more control over it because of the, like either I could improve the property or I could change the rents or I could change the financing so that I made it more successful. So I think that was the, the key for me. I did fail on a bunch of different types of investing, especially the stock market. I am not a stock market guy, so <laughs> that's just not me, right? But everybody's different. Are you still acquiring properties in the current environment or have you taken a slowed approach? Yeah. So I, I, I do acquire properties in this environment. It's just making sure to have the right financing. So buying apartment buildings is a game of finance with kind of bricks and mortar thrown in. So what we are, 
looking at when we're acquiring properties is either trying to assume financing that's already in place. So we'll try to assume financing that the previous owner has. And then if there's not enough debt there, then we'll look to the seller to add some sort of vendor take back or seller financing to bring up the loan to value to, so that it makes sense so that we can push our, our return on investment. So our annual return higher, because that's what we're, we're always looking to push that ROI higher. And so, yes, we're still, still doing it. It just requires a little bit more creative financing and terms that, that make sense. Right. But as long as the, it's in an area that we like with the fundamentals that we're looking for and the financing that's in place, then, then we can go ahead with that. So Quentin, if any of our listeners wanted to get some more education or maybe become a subscriber to your program, how could they do so? If they're interested in investing in real estate, you can go to quintindesouza.com. That's an easy way to do it. And if you're learning to learn more about real estate investing yourself, educationrei.com or .ca will get you there. And that's our, our membership program has like, I don't know, I, there's like hundreds of hours of videos that are specific to real estate investing. So that would be helpful. But yeah, that's, that's the best way to, to get a hold of me. Also, I, I, I am all over social media, so you can always look at an REI on Instagram and other social media, and we can connect that way too. Well, thank you, Quentin, for coming on the show. And thank you everybody for listening to another episode of Failing to Success. I'm your host, Chad Kalecki with Cosmic Design and Development. Make sure to subscribe and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.